Hi, I'm Jim, W6LG for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room here on Wolf Mountain. I've been asked a number of times about my call sign and why I have W6LG. Well, it's what was available at the time. I, the LG didn't have any particular significance. Um, I did look up to see who had had the call sign uh, previous uh, to me getting it, and it uh, seemed like it was a really nice guy. There was no negative history about that guy, so it it was the call sign that I picked out of about three or four that were available at the time. Uh, with respect to call signs, when I first got interested in amateur radio about 1962, the guys with two-letter calls were really, really special. Uh, they Many of them had been on the air since um, uh, since before there was a licensing system. They had used uh, call signs that they made up. Uh, in the case of a local guy, uh, Phil Keast, he picked um, uh, his letter, his initials uh, PK, so his ham radio call sign was PK. Uh, when the uh, Department of Commerce started licensing radio stations about 1912, they created nine districts and uh, each of the districts then had initially uh, two two letter suffix. So if you were in the first district, it would be one AA and then one AB, one AC, and so on. And in California, the same thing. Uh, Phil had six DD, and uh, a neighbor of mine, another neighbor, had six PL. But later on, the um, in uh, we went through, by the way, the the two the one by two call signs pretty quickly, and I think within two years they were issuing one by three. So it would be one AAA, one AAB, and so on. Uh, and again, there were nine districts. The um, in in 1927 there was an international conference in Washington D.C. and the United States was given um, N W K and I think a portion of the A's at that point. Um, so the amateurs were then issued a w, a w prefix, so Phil, who had been 6DD, became W6DD, and Don Brockway, who had been uh, PL, he became W6PL. And again, these in, in the 1960s, when I met these guys, I was in awe of them because they were really the, the pioneers of, of, of radio. Um, call signs stayed pretty much the same. Um, in the 1930s, there were a lot of call signs issued in uh, each of the districts, and they went through, not all the way through to the end. Uh, by the way, some some call signs were restricted. Experimental stations like TV stations, uh, uh, the one that I knew about in Los Angeles was W6XYZ, so W6X uh, was not issued. I think Y and Z were also not issued. Um, Airplanes had the N call sign. About 1948, 49, I think they started to issue some K call signs to amateurs. Uh, they were running out of the W's. Uh, the novice licensing began in uh, 1951. There's some confusion on my part about who got what, but some WN, uh, WN call signs were issued to novices early on. They, uh, I believe that they were few and far between that most all novices ended up with a K N call sign and they ended up with the K6 so um, KN6 GLC became K6 GLC uh, Jim McCook um, they went through those novice call signs and went to W uh, in California and in district 1 WV1 and went through those, and then those guys who had a WV1 call sign ended up with a WA, like WA1AAA. That's getting confusing. When I got my license in 63, they were on the WNs, and so we ended up with WB6. Subsequent to that, they started reissuing some of the WA6 calls. And as you know today, it's... Uh, kind of a free-for-all and in a way that's neat because there are a lot of neat call signs there's guys who've been able to pick their name w6bob or w6ben or um, 
guy on the East Coast. Uh, it's AJ2I. AJ is his, uh, his, his name. So we've gone from being real restrictive. I, when I was a novice, you pretty much, I had WN6JZC. There wasn't much I could do about it. And I lived with it for a lot of years. So now it's, you know, with certain classes of licenses, of course, you can get different call signs, and there's some really neat combinations. Um, and I, I think some are really, 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 really creative, and it, I think it's a good thing. Um, when I got my advanced class license in the early 70s, they were giving out uh, two by two call signs, so I ended up with KB6SX, and they had pulled a group of call signs from the Pacific and reissued them to guys in California. So the first guys that heard me on the air thought I was on Baker Howell Island or something really rare. Sorry, it wasn't. I was in Burbank or somewhere. So that's how I ended up with W6LG. It was one of few that were available. It sounded pretty good and I felt lucky to get it. Um, that's the story behind my call sign. It just was one that was available and I felt lucky to get it and the guy that had it before me was a neat guy and uh, I was happy to uh, to continue on with it. So that's the story. Not much to it, but I've been asked and that's the answer. So 73, uh, see you the next time. Uh, next video we'll talk about um, operating in some slang and maybe some things that you want to think about perhaps not doing. Anyway, for now, 73, I'm Jim, W6LG for Ham Radio Basics. See you the next time. Thanks.